Hi, this is Dr. Robert Flowers. An entity relationship diagram is a powerful way to capture data requirements. Let's say we have a requirements analyst or a systems analyst who works for an IT consulting firm. Her job is to capture requirements for a university. The university has a new type of entity, a professor emeritus, the highest rank a professor can achieve. The professor emeritus is a great gig, but there's a catch. The job has limitations ordinary professors don't have. He can only teach at his primary university, no adjunct work allowed, and he can work for at most one company. Why a company? Because the university wants to ensure that practitioners are their primary professors. It sounds complex, but an entity relationship diagram can describe that requirement using just five entities, four relationships, and a little cardinality. So let's search Visio for the term entity. For the sake of simplicity, we'll say that Crow's Foot Notation and the National Institute for Standards and Technologies Integrated Definition Methods, version 1X, are more descriptive than we need. We'll choose Chen's database notation because Dr. Chen's original entity relationship work is the essence of both power and simplicity. So the entity is represented by a rectangle. Uh, remember, those are persons, places, or things that represent, in this case, database tables that are labeled in the singular. And the diamonds are relationships between entities and those are labeled with verbs. First we'll change the orientation to landscape so we have more room across the page. And for next we'll dial in, uh, drag in an entity and we're going to call that professor. And we don't see much. We don't see much because for whatever reason the style that Microsoft Visio uses for the shape bunches up all the letters into one space. So we'll choose one that spreads the letters out and we get something we can actually use. We'll next paste in the entity that represents the university. And one more entity on the far right, that represents the student. Spread these out a little bit. Now we'll add in the relationships between the entities. So a professor teaches at, and we'll need to change the shape here so that the letters are spread out. We'll copy it and a university has students. We'll ask Visio to align these in the middle and to distribute them horizontally so that there's an equal distance between them. Uh, let's do that one more time, use up a little bit more real estate here. All right. And now we can add in the connectors between the relationships and the entities. This has a cardinality of one. It's a little small, so we'll change the font size to 12 and drag out the cardinality so it's separated from the line. And we'll copy it to the clipboard, and we can paste it in in other locations. So what we end up with is a professor who teaches at one university and a university that has many students. But that wasn't our only constraint. 
Remember, the Professor Emeritus is only allowed to teach at one university. So we'll copy relationship here, line it with Professor, and this is going to be a secondary, secondary university. And we'll add in the connection between the university and the professor. But there's one thing that's a little different about the second university. Remember we said that the primary university doesn't want the professor to teach anywhere else. So that's going to have a cardinality of zero. And then our last uh, limitation for the professor was that they're allowed to work at one employer or one company, one for-profit company. So we'll duplicate that. The relationship and the other entity Now we can say the professor works for company, but only one. So let's take a look at what we have here. Because we used the person, place, or thing, or noun uh, construction for our entities, and we used verbs for our relationships, we can form a sentence here. The professor teaches at one university. A university may enroll many students. The professor may not teach at a secondary university, as designated by the zero cardinality here. And the professor may work for one company. The power of entity relationship diagrams is enormous. Using something like Computer Associates ERWIN, you can create an entity relationship diagram that translates into database definition language, and you can translate that DDL into structured query language, SQL, and paste that right into a live database and create a table on the fly. Um, you don't actually have to write the DDL. Conversely, you can reverse engineer a prod database from a DDL into SQL and into an entity relationship diagram without having to draw anything. I've saved a few hundred hours uh, of my time, my team's time, doing reverse engineering just like that. As we learned last week, you can create high quality and information dense diagrams by leveraging the power of existing tools. Once you understand the basic concept, concepts behind the model um, and what elements should be used inside that model, the actual diagram is the easy part. So that's it for entity relationship diagrams. Good luck this week.